COP24. This year's UN climate negotiations took place in Katowice, Poland. Here are three key takeaways from the talks. 1. A Polish host. Poland's presidency of the COP, for the third time in 11 years, had a big influence on how things developed. Its Silesia Declaration, signed by around 50 countries, calls for a just transition to clean energy. But Katowice's role as the heart of a once thriving Polish coal industry provided a stark contrast. Protesters made their thoughts on coal clear at a weekend march. A side event by the Trump administration promoting fossil fuels also sparked protests. Meanwhile, Greta Thunberg, a 15-year-old activist from Sweden, caused waves with her call for an international climate strike. 2. The Paris Rulebook A major aim for this year's COP was to finalise the so-called Rulebook, the instruction manual for how the Paris Agreement should work in practice. Negotiators arrived in Poland with thousands of options that needed to be whittled down to a functional set of rules. One of the disputes that came up was would vulnerable countries, those with less capacity, have the reassurance that they could put in place those rules? Would they have the support, the capacity building they need to be able to do it? That might be putting in place the policies, that might be putting in place some people, they might not have those people in those positions, to be able to deliver on a universal set of rules that all countries will be moving forward on. In the last few days we did see that change. We weren't sure if it was going to, but we saw some of the European countries, we saw the likes of Canada, New Zealand say, we want to come forward and we're going to help unlock that progress and give more reassurance that capacity building and support will be given. In the end, agreement was reached on almost all the rules, including how future climate pledges should be made and how countries should report on things like climate finance and emissions. However, they couldn't agree on how voluntary carbon markets will work. 3. Raising Ambition the recent release of a key scientific report on the stark difference in impacts between 1.5 degrees and 2 degrees of global warming had a strong presence at the conference. Attention focused on the gap between what countries have collectively committed to in the Paris Agreement and what they are doing individually at home. Countries have been asked to submit a fresh round of national climate pledges, known as NDCs, in 2020. Some, including India, Canada and the EU, indicated they are ready to raise their ambition. In the end, the outcome text welcomed the timely completion of the IPCC's 1.5 degree report and invited countries to make use of it. It mentioned the next round of climate pledges but didn't specifically ask countries to increase their ambition. Parties did know that their current efforts is not sufficient to reach a 2 degree, let alone 1.5 degrees. So one of the key questions about this COP is to send a political signal to enhance ambition in response to the insufficient efforts. However, uh, unfortunately, um, this COP only managed to send a mixed uh, signal. Uh, so uh, now the question is whether countries can reinforce their ambition when they come home and uh, start domestic process to revise their NDCs. The climate summit taking place in September 2019 and organised by the UN Secretary General is now seen as a place where frontrunners could begin to submit more stringent pledges ahead of the next COP set to take place in Chile.